What's up everyone? So today I'm going to show you how I make um, Anki cards from lecture notes. So today we actually had a simulation where we had a patient where with status ep epilepticus and this is a simulation so it's a fake patient. But the point is it teaches us how to um, address certain situations like status epilepticus. First thing uh, I always do when I'm making cards is I do the personal, I tag all of my cards and in this case um, this is going to be medicine, but specifically within medicine, this is neurology. And this is all the hierarchical tags add-on, which I've talked about before. But um, if you don't know it, um, you can download it in the link below. Uh, this hierarchical tags add-on is really, really useful. So I'm going to do that. And specifically, I'm talking about status epilepticus. And the reason I'll leave it as status epi is because it's specific enough. By adding a very specific tag, I make sure I can come back to these cards if I wanted to in the future. Um, and now I'm just going to start right here. So if someone comes into the ED and you think that they have status epilepticus um, and they have a fever, what should you do right away? It's start antibiotics. So this was actually something we learned today. And the reason you start antibiotics is because the fact that you have someone with status epilepticus, which is just a continuous seizure from between five to 30 minutes and a fever implies that there might be some level of infection going on in the central nervous system. And this ant antibiotics that you want to start are acyclovir, um, Vank to cover for gram positives. And I believe, um, ceftriaxone because that has good, uh, uh, CNS penetration. And I always make that a closed deletion. Um, and so you see here, I'm going to make that one question. What uh, the second question I want to do is what three antibiotics do you want to start right away? Um, and here, I'm going to kind of rephrase this question and say acyclovir, vanc, and ceftriaxone because this will specifically now, if I ever come into the situation, I'll know which ones to start. Um, and the acyclovir is to cover for HSV, which is herpes simplex virus because it's the viral and you can get viral meningitis. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is I, you may have noticed that I'm using this add-on. This is the freeze add-on. Um, I haven't talked about it yet. If you want me to talk about it, let me know and I'll make another video on it. But the freeze add-on just lets me kind of pause things. Um, you, so another thing I did ask in class is usually when someone comes into the ED, if we start them on antibiotics, we'll start them on Vank and Zosin. So I asked, like, why don't we start patients on Vank and Zosin if we're presuming meningitis? And the reason for that is because Zosin, which is another antibiotic for gram negatives, uh, does not have good penetration into the central nervous system. And so that's actually really good for me to know because I was like, oh, how interesting. And that's why I use ceftriaxone instead of Zosin. Um, you will often, so I'm going to make a flashcard about this particular point now. Um, uh, and the reason for this is because cefriaxone has better CNS penetration. And the note that I'm going to add here is the overall ability to fight uh, GNRs remains relatively constant. The only thing that's different between ceftriaxone and Zosin in terms of coverage is that ceftriaxone usually doesn't cover a pseudomonas, but usually pseudomonas doesn't lead to meningitis. Um, and so that might actually be something I want to add here too. Pseudomonas does not lead to meningitis, so we are not as concerned. So Zosin is not as preferred. Okay, so you'll see here, I just included that note. And so that's that. Uh, the other thing is someone comes into the ED and you think that they have status epilepticus and they have a fever, you often start ceftriaxone instead of Zosin. Why is this? Ceftriaxone has better CNS penetration. The other thing was um, there's different levels of treating status epi epi epilepticus that we learned in the simulation today. So, so what I'm going to do now is actually go through the, the mechanism. So for treating status epilepticus, um, in terms of management, um, what is the first thing you would want to give? And the answer here is just benzos, uh, benzodiazepines. Um, but you'll realize that sometimes you want to start benzos initially 
And you'll see here I have my notes that I'm just going to include because I want these to be present. So you push benzos initially to kind of get the status epilecticus under control, and then you add a long-acting agent like phosphanitoin, um, and that works. Um, and if that does not work, like I think the next step is if this does not work, you need to intubate, which means you actually need to get the patient uh, intubated. Um, you are okay. So you'll see here that in this in this card, I kind of just summarized the general mechanism. Because for one thing is I want to know what status epilepticus is, which I already do. So I didn't make a card about that. But now I'm making all these cards based on my notes. Uh, and you're now seeing exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay. So, all right. Um, if you decide to get an LP to manage status ep status epi Lepticus, what do you need to do beforehand? Uh, get a CT because again, uh, this is another thing that's important for me to know because today in the simulation, uh, we were going to just do an LP, but then one of my classmates was like, oh, we should get a CT scan, make sure there's no herniation. Because if you do an LP, a lumbar puncture, which is when you go into the spine and pull out some CSF, if you do that while someone has a mass in their head, you can potentially cause herniation of the brain. And that's actually really, really bad and can potentially kill someone. So you want to get a CT and make sure to make sure there is no mass and thus decreased risk of herniation. Okay. So that's the plan for the CT. Oh, okay. This is a good one. If someone comes into the ED and they are immunocompromised, have a fever and are and are in status epilepticus, which I don't think I've defined yet, but I think I actually did define it. It's basically just a long seizure. Um, what antibiotics do you want to start them on? Um, in this case, this is important because um, you'll see right here I made a note. If someone was immunocompromised, you want to add ampicillin to cover for listeria because listeria can affect immunocompromised patients. So in this case, you still want to do the acyclovir for HSV, uh, ceftriaxone for the gram-negative rods. You probably want to start VANC just in case MRSA. MRSA can do anything. But then you also want to add an ampicillin because uh, listeria can also cause meningitis and tends to affect immunocompromised patients. Okay, so... And you'll notice here I'm going to write times four because there's four medications that I'm looking for. And actually, now that I mention it, there's actually probably other cards that I added today that I want to edit. Specifically here, I should probably write times three because there's three answers here. Um, and I think those are good. Okay. All right. So, so far so good. Uh, I already did this. Once the PCR for HSV is negative, you can discontinue acyclovir. Um, so I'll probably include that here. Once, once the PCR for HSV is negative, you can DC the acyclovir. All right. So I probably should add that to my. Um, to the other cards that I added today as well. So let's go into my history, and then I'm going to go back to my cards that I added today. And for anything that mentions acyclovir, I'll say once the PCR for HSV is negative, you can discontinue the acyclovir. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, and this video is already getting to be a bit long, so I just will end it here. I'll make another video about this heart sound information. Uh, and show you how I convert that into flashcards as well, maybe tomorrow. But for right now, it's already like 1 a.m. and I need to sleep. And I've added way too many cards to my deck this week anyway. So I, I try to not add too many cards at once. But if you look, I actually just added only like about five cards today. Um, five cards just right right now. Um, and so um, I try to keep it bare minimum. But you'll see that these six cards now cover a decent amount. They're tagged appropriately. And they even have... Um, a lot of these general concepts that I covered. And so now tomorrow when I redo my cards, I'll actually be able to know what happened. Okay. All right. So I'm going to kind of stop it there. I will do another one of these, hopefully about my um, cardiac murmurs and um, add more onto how to 
utilize your lectures to make Anki cards. But this is the first video in this series, and if you liked it, drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, let me know what else you want to see. If you want me to see uh, add-on videos, let me know. There's going to be a couple of vlogs coming out soon. Um, so that's that. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.